to our flag. Almighty God, grant us the wisdom to make those decisions that are in the best interest of all of our residents. May the Heavenly Father of us all bless those who have given the ultimate sacrifice and service to our nation, and may he watch over and protect our servicemen and women now guarding the gates of freedom. Salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. 
and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Terry, has this meeting been advertised according to law? Yes, this, uh, take notice that this regular meeting of the Mayor and Borough Council being held on the 25th day of June 2018 has been advertised and posted in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Thank you, Terry. Roll call. Roll call. Council Persons Buchanan. Here. Grillo. Here. Kilpatrick. Here. Lembo. Here. Melendez. Here. Novak. Here. All right, I move the following minutes be, <coughs> um, I'm sorry, hold on one second. Approval of prior minutes of April 23rd, 2018, executive session one, COA banners, subject to change if necessary. Uh, executive session two, security. May 14th, 2018, council meeting and agenda session. Second. second. Roll call. Council persons Kilpatrick? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Novak? Yes. Um, Terry, do we have any, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, At this time we need to go into executive yes. session, Mayor. Yes, uh, uh, Mayor, whereas the acting, whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act permits the exclusion of the, the, me, the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now therefore be resolved by the Mayor and Borough Council, Borough of Sayreville, um, State of New Jersey as follows, the public portion of this meeting is hereby adjourned in order that the governing body may meet and close private session for approximately 15 minutes to discuss tax appeal, litigation, uh, litigation in general, personnel, following the conclusion of said closed session, the governing body shall reconvene the open portion of this public meeting, considering any other matters which may be properly brought before at the time. The nature and content of the discussion which occurs in closed session shall be made public at such time as the need for non-disclosure no longer exists. This resolution shall take effect immediately. So will move. Resolution be approved. I got Councilwoman Novak moving it. I need a second. Councilman Buchanan? Sure. Thank you. Roll call. Council Persons Novak? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break to go into exec session. We should return in about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Go into three. Oh, no, we're going to three. Oh, let's go. 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 Let's
Well, I, I, I that's why I asked you. That's what I asked you. I'll buy a bottle of scotch at the end of yeah, the year. Yeah, a bottle of scotch. <laughs> Just for saying that. Probably buy me that cheap scotch. Oh, man, I hang out with Rick. You got Glenn Livet scotch? No, I go cheap. <laughs> Rick Rump. I don't even, we didn't get very far in that. Uh, Ready to get in? Oh, oh yeah, no question. Got to roll this back. Ready? Motion to reconvene. So moved. Second. <laughs> roll call. Councilperson Buchanan? Here. Grillo? Here. Kilpatrick? Here. Lembo? Here. Melendez? Here. Novak? Here. Moving on to old business. Terry? Is that the. Do you want me to read this? Yes. Would you read the following resolutions from the Planning Board from their June 13, 2018 special meeting? The mayor and council received the following resolutions uh, that were from the planning board um, that they took action on at their June 13th, 2018 special meeting. A resolution adopting the amended, amended housing element fair share plan. A resolution authorizing the execution of a settlement agreement between the borough of several and National Lead Industries Incorporated. A resolution authorizing the execution of a settlement agreement between the borough and, and K-Land Corporation. Resolution declaring the rezoning ordinance and property identified on the borough's tax map as Block 297, Lot, lot 1, Block 333, Lot 1, Block 332, Lots 1, 3, and 4, which is the national lead site to create an AH3 zone for affordable housing consistent with the borough's master plan. A resolution declaring the rezoning ordinance for property identified on the borough's tax map known as Block 136.16. Lots 30.05 and 30.06 and block 366.01, lot 1, block 367.01, lot 1, and block 347.01, lots 3.01. And that would be to create an AH1 and an AH2 zone for inclusionary residential development as consistent with the borough's master plan. A resolution adopting the amended River Road Redevelopment Plan and ordinance implementing the amendment. And now we need to have the public hearing on the following ordinances. Ordinance number 413 dash. I'm sorry, did the council want to have any discussion on those resolutions? Any discussion? Do we have to have a motion to receive and file? Do we have to? Yeah. I think there should be a motion to yeah. receive and file. That's, That's uh, so moved by Mary. And I had a motion made by Councilman Novak, second, second by Councilman Lembo. Roll call. Councilperson Novak? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Uh, Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Thank you. you We're going to move to the public hearing on the. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Steve. Sorry, Steve. I'm sorry, Councilman Grillo. I'm going to vote yes. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, Steve. May I vote no because I got left out? <laughs> I Pub apologize, Steve. <laughs> um, we're going to move into the public hearing on the following ordinances. Ordinance number 413-18, an ordinance of the Borough of Several amending and supplementing Article 3 of Chapter 26, Land Development of the Code of the Borough of Several to establish new affordable housing districts, AH1, AH2, and to set forth the standards and criteria applicable thereto. Um, let's see. We're going to open to the public. Um, while we do have several ordinances here, please just try and keep your comments as close to our five-minute um, limit. But obviously, this is of important issue, so um, I will be lenient with that uh, time frame. <coughs> Any questions from the public? Is only on 413? Yes. Yes. Seeing no. Seeing no. Oh, oh I'm sorry, one. Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Council President. Appreciate the opportunity to speak, and, I, and I'm going to touch briefly on 413, 414, and 418 because they really are um, tied together. They all have to do with the COA and the fair share. And I want to thank you for getting us to this point tonight. Um, the ordinances that you are going to pass hopefully are not perfect, certainly, and I'm sure we'll hear from my, my friends in Melrose about some concerns that they have, but this is a far cry a far cry from the original ordinances that would have built uh, or allowed for the building of thousands of market rate apartments in Cerville. 
Um, as a result of this process, which began, at least as far as I'm concerned, more than a year ago, a year and a few months ago, um, and the ordinances that you are considering, a few things will happen. One is that fewer market rate apartments will be built. Now the fairness hearing is Thursday, so I'm not going to comment on that aspect of it, but other than to say that this all started as a way to increase, uh, to increase the number of affordable units that we're going to end up with, and I hope that will be achieved, and we'll see the result of that. Um, Another benefit is that we have an ordinance that provides a set aside or provides a monetary contribution for developments going forward that will contribute to this, which is a, which is a good thing. As a result of this, four and a half heavily treed acres will be acquired by the borough, saved from development, and added to Kennedy Park, which I think is a very good thing. 86 units of housing with veterans preference will be constructed, which I think is a, is a great thing. I think that you also saw, the public saw, the governing body saw, the benefits of having experts like Susan Gruel and the Serenian firm and Mr. DuPont and, and their teams advising. And I think um, one of the reasons that this ordinance is in the position that it is in now and is so much better than what was originally introduced and signed by the mayor is because of that expertise of those three teams. So I, I think there's some, something to be learned there. I think and I hope that you all learn that there is merit in listening to the public and their ideas because a lot of the ideas that have been incorporated into the final plan came from the, came from the public, um, were made here at this microphone and I think that's something that uh, um, should be appreciated and I hope the planning board too will listen the way the council did when the folks from Melrose appear when the application is is before them and they want to talk about setbacks and buffering and things like that. And I certainly hope the planning board will be as responsive as the governing body was. Another lesson that we all should learn that governing isn't easy and it can't be rushed. And the reason that we're here where we are now with a better plan is there was a plan that was rushed through. It was developed by the planning board in secret without the appropriate expertise and guidance and was sent to the council and was pushed through. And I've talked about this many times. We used to have Section 8 meetings. I, I think at the beginning of that meeting, the mayor announced it will only be five minutes, folks. And then the council went in, and I don't know if there was a vote or not, but the mayor signed the agreement after a five-minute discussion in closed session. That's, that's not the way to do things. And I think these three ordinances reflect that you took the time and had the understanding and you put the care into this that you should have. So for that, I am I'm very grateful. One of the other things that I hope we've all learned from this is when you have an important issue such as this, and I've said many times, that <coughs> other than the incinerator, this is probably one of the most important issues facing the borough of Cerebral since I have been coming to council meetings, which has been a very long time. When you have important issues like that, it's important to get those things out to the public so that the public knows and the public can, can share your concern and make their views known. Certain things, obviously, when you're talking about strategy or tactics or things like that, that has to be done in closed session. We understand that. But the general idea of what you're talking about, that we had this COA is issue facing us, that we were in this litigation, that should have been made known, certainly by the planning board, and by the governing body earlier than it was because none of us, as much as we might like to think so, none of us have a monopoly on wisdom and hearing from the public is always a good thing. So I thank you all for, uh, for this. I thank those especially who were with us and going in this direction since day one. I thank those whose positions have evolved and who I hope will be voting for this today, and who came along and, and hired the right professionals to get us to this point, because I think that was key in this. I thank everybody who will be voting for it tonight, and I don't know if the mayor's gonna sign this, or, or you as the council president will sign this, but I, whoever does sign it, um, I thank you, and I also thank all the members of the public 
who had to take a crash course in land use and planning and affordable housing and things like that to know what they know, to be able to come up and express their concern and get their neighbors mobilized to speak intelligently so that everybody knew what was going on. I certainly thank uh, the members of the public for that. This is the way that government is supposed to work. Um, it's a lot better than it had been, and I, I appreciate the time, effort, and energy that all of you have put into this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jim, for those comments. Anybody else wish to speak on Ordinance 413-18? With seeing nobody coming forward, uh, roll call. Um, could we have a motion? Uh, that would be Pat Lembo. Second. Roll call. Councilperson Lembo? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Novak? Yes. Public hearing on ordinance number 414-18, an ordinance of the borough of Cerro amending and supplementing article three of chapter 26, land development of the code of the borough of Cerro to establish new affordable housing districts, AH3, and to set forth the standards and criteria applicable thereto. Uh, open to the public for any comments on ordinance 414-18. Yes, Janice. Janice Benazetto, 1 Thomas Avenue in the Melrose section of uh, Saraville. Um, I'm not going to repeat uh, what Jim Robinson uh, so eloquently said, uh, uh, but I uh, do uh, feel, and I feel the residents of Melrose feel the same way, uh, even though we're not uh, happy with the fact that we uh, are not uh, getting 22 acres of open space, uh, which uh, you know we would have liked as the Melrose uh, Nature Preserve. And I appreciate everybody's uh, efforts uh, to take um, a, a bad situation and improve it as uh, best as possible and to have the best outcome. But it needs to be watchdogged along the way. Now, um, I hope that we will have support by whoever the council liaison is with the planning board and zoning and things of that sort along the way because I said a lot last time and I'm not going to repeat it all in, uh, um, at this point in time. We all know how uh, we feel we were hoping for open space. A lot of mistakes were made. Um, uh, we're dealing with a bad situation and we're trying to make uh, um, lemonade out of lemons at this point in time. Uh, but there's still a lot of work to be done and we need everybody's support um, to have a good outcome and to have this uh, go forward uh, trying to um, uh, protect the wildlife, protect the quality of life, uh, to protect things uh, like the environment, um, you know, uh, we are more or less uh, all um, stewards or uh, trustees for our environment, for our world. Um, it's an issue of conservation. It's an issue of uh, the quality of life, not only for ourselves, but for our children. Uh, we can't, um, you know, have uh, the deer and the hawks and the rabbits and the wild turkeys running down Oak Street and Cross Avenue come here and speak up, but it's going to be a sad day when we start seeing them dead on the parkway and Route 9 and things of that sort. And we're uh, trustees for the children uh, and for the natural resources of the world. So this is a very sad day when we're giving up 22 acres almost of uh, trees, wildlife, uh, natural resources that provide oxygen and improve the quality of life. And as this goes forward, if there's any possibility of anyone helping it along the way, because the, um, a lot of failures started with the planning um, board. And I don't have a lot of faith that when we as uh, citizens go to the planning board now that uh, we are going to be heard. Uh, at the last council meeting, you said that my questions would be asked at the uh, planning, answered at the planning board meeting and things of that sort. But I was sh uh, shut down uh, fairly quickly and you can all watch the uh, uh, 
tapes and the, you know, uh, uh, YouTube and, uh, you know, the televised uh, version. Uh, but not all my questions were uh, answered. And uh, transparency is very, very important. And um, to try to make this the best we can, it's very, very important that as we go forward, there's some changes in the settlement agreement that talk about their concept plan and that now it's a general concept plan that's going to be worked on in the future. Um, and the parties shall work collaboratively collaboratively to develop an advanced concept plan within a reasonable time frame, which I don't know what that means, which once agreed upon shall supersede Exhibit B to this agreement. So as things go forward, developing this advanced concept plan, we need to uh, look at if there's any improvements that can be made to uh, improve the 100-foot setback maybe to 200 or 300, or if when they, um, they're saying that they need, um, uh, they have not, uh, the development for the property has not been fully engineered. When they look at the property, if they determine that any part is not really developable, well, maybe uh, we can have some open space purchased and leave it as natural woodlands in that case. Um, to just try to improve things as best as possible. I'm very happy that at least uh, with everybody's combined efforts, um, and that not um, talking about efforts of working with uh, uh, people concerned with the K land properly and the Melrose residents, that we've achieved uh, four acres for open space. And it's in um, uh, your hands to make sure the four acres really come through as open space and that nothing prevents that from happening because this way um, all of the efforts of all of the residents of this borough have uh, been worthwhile in that case. If we uh, get those four acres as open space and if we make the development in the Melrose section as uh, good as possible and uh, say the setback, uh, leave it as natural, uh, uh, woodland not have every tree cleared from, uh, from the uh, property. Uh, and um, there's some changes here uh, regarding Cross Avenue and the dedication of Cross Avenue and who's responsible uh, uh, for uh, making the improvements for a uh, municipal uh, standard approved two-way street and things of that sort. Um, uh, making Cross Avenue as good as possible and uh, uh, you know, concerning the safety of the new residents of the new development and the existing Melrose section, uh, you know, uh, if we're having uh, um, new uh, people move in, we also want to make sure that it's as pleasant as possible for them, as safe as possible for them. That we have municipal services necessary for emergency medical services, for fire department services, for police, for schools, infrastructure, water, and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna take a lot of work. It's gonna go on for a lot of years. And um, you know whether the uh, people making the decisions are voted in, appointed, hired, or volunteer, we really need um, people who care who, people who are willing to put the time in and not uh, looking just to get home and end a meeting quickly, and people who are really going to put forth the effort. Like I want to thank all of the Melrose residents and all of the K-Land uh, property residents for everything that they did, for every flyer that was printed, for every phone call that was made, for every research uh, hour that was spent, and for all of the... Uh, um, uh, trials and tribulations that we went through this last year. Thank you, Janice. Thank you so much. I appreciate all those comments. We have another, we have uh, one more comment or possibly more. Go ahead, Steve. Steve Malinowski, Scarlet Drive in Parlin. Uh, I don't want to take much time on this, but again, to echo Jim's comments, I think it was a real learning lesson, a long journey after a lot of mistakes that the council pulled together and the key lesson here I believe is bringing in the right people to do the right job that really know how to create and do what we need to have done. 
That saves a lot of time, may cost a little bit more money, but in the end, we get a better result. I want to go back to also, you know, talking about what I've been asking for for a while. The planning board, as Janice so rightfully said, has been the cause of some of the missteps that we've had. I've been asking time and time again for where's the checks and balances on the planning board or any other board that comes into the, the borough council. You guys have the backs of every resident in this town and getting some good checks and balances so that we don't go too far astray and the public is kept in the lines of communication, transparency, as Janice said, is critically important. Jim said on the 28th, I believe, we have the fairness meeting with the, with the, the, the courts. Hopefully from that, we can start to create what I've been asking for, for our residents, is a real performer on where we hope to stand, what's gonna be the impact to our town, which is us, whether it be infrastructure, et cetera. Steve, we're on See, that. Steve, Steve we're actually working on that. on that. That was within our uh, packets here today, and we we're lucky enough to have an excellent planner before us, Ms. Susan Gruel, who's agreed to work on that pro forma for us and was kind enough to come up with also a fee for that, which <laughs> was uh, w within what I believe to be reason for the scope of the work that needs to be accomplished. Right, and, and I'm not looking for it today, but I'm saying once we iron this down, yes. hopefully that can come back in some very plain English for, when I say English, I mean Trent, something that easily is digested by the town. I took a quick look at some of the stuff that the planning board put through all those resolutions. 26 pages after 26 pages is very hard for a, a normal resident to digest. So Great. having that articulated in a clear, concise manner for us to be digested, digest it and understand it is, you know, in your purview and I want to thank you for the time and all the effort that you guys have put together as well as the people in the residence here that have come to these meetings and I encourage more and more of us to come here listen learn and speak your mind thank okay. you thank you Steve anyone else from the public wish to speak I want to just try and keep this as uh, uh, close to ordinance 414-18 with nobody else coming forward um, can I have a motion for ordinance 414-18 and that would go to Mr. Limbo. Can you speak into the mic, please? Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Lembo? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Rillo? Yes, with just a, a quick comment. Um, just to echo what Janice said, I, I would hope that the planning board uh, be very, very diligent in reviewing the draft site plan. Um, there's certainly some concerns and issues that this council had regarding Cross Avenue and other circulation at the site. Um, so I'd just like to go on the record asking, at least for myself and hopefully my colleagues, that the planning board will consider that uh, when this site plan eventually does come to them. But yes. Council uh, Person uh, Kilpatrick? Uh, yes, with comment, and I'm going to hold mine to under five minutes. I cannot thank the public enough as well as our professionals as I have done repeatedly. This has been a long process and it is not over, but we are so much closer to what we need to be. Um, the faces and the people that we've heard come up, um, usually Mr. Robinson, Ms. Benedetto, and of course Steve as well, you guys really did open our eyes to things that we didn't even understand at first on our own and you are correct the public was instrumental in helping us to see and to lead us in the direction in which to research and to obtain the best professionals that we could um, i'm going to speak on behalf of all of my, my council cohorts here because we did come together at a time when originally we were not and i'm very very happy to see that we all were able to work together on something that i think is a much better fit for our town and again, it's not as perfect as I wish that it could be. It's not the exact thing that I think we all wanted to have happen at the end, but we are going to make this work. And moving forward, I think we're a stronger and better council for this. And all of us are going to continue to do what we believe is in the best interest of the public. And we just ask that you continue to keep us honest and come and speak to us. It's always nice to actually have people in the audience and it's always concerning when I don't see the public out here concerned about the things that's gonna impact their everyday life. So Thank you to all of our professionals. Thank you to the developers also that were willing to sit down and talk to us because yes, even though um, I sort of got a bad taste in my mouth for developers, um, there are some good ones out there still 
that are willing to do right and listen to us and to negotiate with us um, in fair terms. So with that being said, emphatically yes to the ordinance as well. Councilman Melendez? Yes. No back. Yes, with comment, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I really would like to thank the public. They were instrumental in getting this uh, push forward. Uh, for professionals, for being fantastic. And I wish, and I hoped, and I actually thought for a while that we would be also being able to uh, get the property on Cross Avenue for open space, but uh, that didn't work out. And uh, we will be watching the planning board in hopes that there's more uh, spaces made available for recreation in the area. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Public hearing on ordinance number 418-18 um, and ordinance adopting the River Road Redevelopment Plan Amendment. Open to the public for any comments on this ordinance and this ordinance alone. Seeing none, close the public portion. And over again to Mr. Lembo. Is this mic on? Councilman Lembo, is your mic on? Nope. Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> we need a second on that. Second. Roll call. Council Persons Lembo? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes, with comment uh, again to the planning board. Uh, if uh, I, I urge them to consider the circulation plan at the site as well. Um, the certainly, uh, main, the Main Street bypass has not been built. Um, we need to un obviously take that into consideration. Uh, potentially uh, an increase in the retail space that's at the site and then potentially some transit access of having a bus uh, run down to that site. Um, as well. I think those are all positive impacts uh, for a site that I think will be well planned out, um, but certain things that haven't been brought yet to the attention. So um, I'd urge the planning board to do that as well, but yes. Councilwoman Kilpatrick. Yes, with brief comment, I would just like to say once again, as I have before, I'd like to thank the redevelopment agency for their help in actually making this project move forward. This is the 100% affordable river road project that we talked about. This is also the affordable project that would actually give us the veteran preference that we had been asking for for multiple years. Jim Robinson got up to state that this was an 86 unit um, project. Um, actually, it's 88 units. So we get an extra, we get a couple more, even better. Um, um, so yes, on that ordinance, thank you. Councilman Melendez? Yes. Councilwoman Novak? Yes. Public hearing on ordinance number 416-18, an ordinance amending and supplementing chapter 12 of the revised journal ordinance of the borough of Cerville to amend section 12.1 state uniform construction code. Um, open to the public, public for any comments on ordinance 416-18 only. Seeing none, um, Councilman Lembo again. <laughs> Council President, I move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second on that. Second. Roll call. Council Persons Lembo? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Novak? Yes. Public hearing on ordinance number 417-18 an ordinance amending and supplementing chapter 12 of the revised general ordinances of the borough of Cerebral to amend section 7-3 a dash 3.7 handicapped parking spaces in streets <laughs> open to open to the public for comments on ordinance number 417-18 seeing no comment <laughs> seeing nobody uh coming to the podium acting um, mayor i move the public hearing be closed the ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law second roll call please council persons buchanan yes grillo yes kilpatrick Yes. Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Novak? Yes. Public hearing on ordinance number 419-18, bond ordinance providing for the improvements to various parks in the borough of Cerville, New Jersey, appropriating $1,417,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,346,150 of bonds or notes of the borough for financing part of such appropriation. Uh, thank you, Terry. Any co um, comments from the public on ordinance 419-18? Seeing none. It's administration. Uh, move, uh, administration and finance. Uh, I move Council the public Manova. hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. Roll call, please. Council persons Novak. Yes. Buchanan. Yes. Grillo. Yes. Kilpatrick. Yes. Lembo. Yes. Melendez. Yes. Public hearing on ordinance number 420-18, bond ordinance providing for various improvements in by and for the borough of Cerville, New Jersey, appropriating $1,322,000. Therefore, in authorizing the issuance of $1,255,900 bonds and notes of the borough for financing part of such appropriation. Anyone from the public wish to speak on 420-18? Seeing none, I move the public finance. 
I move the public portion be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Novak? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Okay, at this time, I would just like to take a moment and um, release our officer here. Um, thank you very much for coming. Have a safe evening. And let's move on to new business. I do not have any appointments at this time. Introduction of the following ordinance is ordinance number 421-18, bond ordinance providing for Scott Avenue water line improvements in the borough of Sarah, New Jersey, appropriating $550,000, therefore, and authorize the issuance of $550,000 bonds and notes of the borough for financing part of so such appropriation. Uh, I move, sorry, I move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law for public killing to be held on July 23rd, prevailing time. Second. Roll call, please. Council Persons Novak? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Lambo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Before we go forward, uh, yeah, I know. I have one question of our treasurer. Uh, did we get a supplemental supplemental debt statement? Yes, ma'am, I did. I sent it down today. Thank I you. Send you the confirmation. Okay, so then I would like to report on having received the supplemental debt statement from our CFO, Denise Biancamano, dated as of June 25, 2018. Need a motion to receive and so file moved. for these so, ordinances? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Council Persons Novak? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Lambo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Thank you. Uh, 422 mm -hmm. 18. Or 2318. <laughs> Can I finish writing? Yep. Thank you. Ordinance number 422-18, bond ordinance providing for the Hercules Village sewer improvements in by and for the borough of Sarah, New Jersey, appropriating $225,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $213,750 bonds and notes of the borough for financing part of such appropriation. Councilwoman Novak? Yes, I move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised calling to law for a public hearing to be held on July 23rd, prevailing time. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Council Persons Novak? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Ordinance number 423-18, bond ordinance providing for the Hercules Village water improvements in the borough of Cerebral, New Jersey, appropriating $675,000 and authorizing the issuance of $675,000 bonds and notes of the borough for financing part of such appropriation. Uh, admin and finance, that's Councilwoman Novak. Thank you. I move the ordinance to be approved on first reading, advertised according to law for public hearing to be held on July 23rd, prevailing time. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Councilman Grillo? Yes. Um, Councilman, uh, Council Persons Novak? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Introduction of ordinance number 424-18. Uh, an ordinance of the Borough of Cerro Cal County of Middlesex amending and supplementing ordinance number 414-18. Uh, yes, uh, Council President, I move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law and a public hearing be held on July 23rd. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Council Persons Lembo? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Kilpatrick? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Novak? Yes. All right, moving to the consent this, agenda resolutions. I have one more. We have one oh, more. Did I skip I one? One more. Oh, look at that. Introduction of ordinance number 425-18, ordinance of the borough of Cerville, New Jersey, um, Middlesex County, New Jersey, amending and supplementing ordinance number 413-18. Councilman Lembo, please. Yes, Council President, I move the ordinance to be approved on first reading, advertised according to law, and a public hearing be held on July 23rd. Second. Is there a second? Got Councilwoman Novak. All right, roll call, please. Council Persons Lembo. Yes. Buchanan. Yes. Grillo. Yes. Kilpatrick. Yes. Melendez. Yes. Novak. Yes. Well, I have mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's see, I'm going to open to the public under consent agenda resolutions only. Anyone from the public wish to speak? Seeing. Yep. Go ahead, sir. Make sure you just state your name and address, please, for the record. My name is Scott Tabaco, 98 Woodmere Drive, Portland, New Jersey. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. 98 Woodmere Drive in Woodmere. Lamar. Thank you. Um, I was here a few months ago when we had the big meeting about the, uh, um, uh, the old age home across the street near Eisenhower School. I don't think that's under consent agenda yet. Can uh, you just it's wait? only on the consent of what's yeah, on there. Right now. Yes, yeah, right Daily. after oh, we okay. do this, right after. That's fine. Give me Thank a couple you. more minutes, that's all. Thank you. Anybody else for the consent agenda resolutions only? Seeing none, I um, make a motion to close the uh, consent agenda resolution um, public session. Second. And adopt. Did we? And adopt. And adopt. So, council, I'm sorry, you yeah. move. 
He yeah. Moved. I second it. It was actually a question, but I forget I get to wear two hats here. Uh, okay, uh, Council Persons Kilpatrick? Yes. Buchanan? Yes. Grillo? Yes. Lembo? Yes. Melendez? Yes. Novak? Yes. Okay, thank you, Terry. Any, um, I was just gonna ask if there were any resolutions to be read in full. There are none, Mayor. There are none, thank you. Uh, Borough Engineer's report? No report, thank you very much. Borough Attorney's report? No report, Mayor. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, you may stand, sir. Any other comments? Okay, once again, Scott Tabaco, 98 Woodmere Drive. Um, a few months ago, this board voted to uh, deny the application uh, for the petitioners that were trying to turn the old age home on uh, Ernston Road to a, uh, a rehab facility. Actually, I believe that went before the zoning board. That didn't come before us. Um, the zoning board did deny that, and then that was brought into uh, litigation, and a judge um, overruled that decision by the zoning board. Yes, they did. Yes. Go is ahead, there yeah. anything that this board can do? I'm going to turn that over to our attorney right now because we do have, um, I believe there is some litigation or at least something brought before yeah, us. At this, at this point in time, I know there's a pending litigation. Um, I know that the uh, attorney for the zoning board is recommending uh, accepting the uh, the order of the uh, court. Um, so at this point in time, I have nothing further to add because uh, I haven't been addressed on any other issues. So the planning board is saying that they're going to accept it instead of trying to fight this. The, the zoning board. It's the zoning, zoning board. board. Yeah, the zoning board. I, is you know, again, I haven't I haven't seen uh, any zoning board minutes. So my suggestion to you is, if you have uh, any issues with the the action taken or the litigation that you. Uh, um, you know, comment them at the next zoning board. Do you have any expertise as what the distance is between a drug-free school zone and where that? No, I don't. That would be better addressed to the zoning board, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. No worries. Any other, any other comments from the public? I see. I'm a little yes. short here. Is that Miss Mooney? Yes. It is. Come on up, Ruth Ann. <laughs> We're going to have to get you a school. I know. I think I need a telephone book. <laughs> Good evening. Ruth Ann Mahoney, 2 Gerard Place, Parlin. A comment on Optimum. In my court where we live, just the other day, an Optimum truck hit another car. It was witnessed. Um, the Optimum driver was said, you just hit that person's car. Oh, well, and he left. Just I know we're in talks with Optimum. It was reported to the police. They have the, the uh, license plate number. Optimum responded to the resident today and said, we're not paying. He didn't do it. She said, there's witnesses. Oh, well, they didn't do it. It was a metal garbage can. We don't have metal, metal garbage, garbage cans. cans. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have metal garbage report? cans. Yeah, yes, the thing. police report has been made. So, but I know we're. Time of the incident, they got a police report? Uh, shortly, shortly hours after because there was a witness. So I'm just saying. Thank you. <laughs> it's an <laughs> optimum. No, we're not going to do it because they can. Thank you for that. Thank but you. I, that's, that's all. Thank you, Ruth Ann Mahoney. One more thing. Can they issue a ticket for leaving the scene of an accident? They also raised their rates again. They did. I'm sorry. They, they raised their rates again. I heard from a few residents, and I got my own bill a few days ago, and they uh, jacked it. Now, Dan, in our negotiations with them, what exactly can we negotiate? Does the governing <laughs> body have any say as to what they're charging our residents? The, the rates have been... Um, submitted to the Board of Public Utilities. I've been trying to work with our state senator right now to see about getting into the Board of Public Utilities because right now our, our talks, not that they've broken down, I have really nothing to talk about anymore because anything I bring up, the only thing that we have been trying to get is other upgrades such as to the senior center for or, high, or more high speed or more hot spots. But right now, I can't negotiate rates. It's so moving forward, is there anything else that we can do as a council then to collectively come together? Now, if you've already reached out to, um, to our senators and to the Public Utilities Board, is there anything else that we have at our disposal that we can do 
Um, is there something that we need to do in like the form of a resolution or something in writing in order to really let them know that we mean business when it comes to these types of situations? I, th I, I think what you can do is you can pass a resolution outlining some of the complaints okay, that the uh, borough of Sarahville uh, is having and send it to not only uh, our senators and our assemblymen but also the BPU mm -hmm. for action. I mean, uh, Mr. Franco and I could prepare a resolution and then circulate it and see if, in fact, that includes any and all the complaints yeah. that have been uh, set forth on the record. Being that our uh, business administrator seems to have his hands tied, even though he reached out to the proper entities by, you know, word of mouth, I think that's something that we need to entertain. And um, does the council have any uh, objections to doing that? No, not at all. No? It's just Absolutely. my understanding, though, Dan, it's based on competition, right? The limited amount of flexibility we have Correct. from a, a negotiation point of view is just just to let the residents know i reached out for just for my own edification i reached out for direct tv there is not a you can't even speak to a human being for direct tv direct tv is based in el segundo california you can't even get into the corporate offices of direct tv so this is what we're sort of up against, and that's the competition right now. That was one of my suggestions. Direct just TV. I, I was even I, offering. I, I personally, I, gonna, I don't have cable. I, I was going to offer Direct TV to come to a pre and do a presentation. I can't even get someone on the phone. Well, I still think we can. We should okay. dig a little further on that because it is on competition. Gonna, uh, if everyone in this town decided tomorrow not to have right. to cancel their cable right. and go Direct TV, yep. things may change. But I, I did ask Dan to reach out for them, and maybe there's a TV corporate plan. You know, maybe they can come give several forty thousand people. A, a, a special package mm -hmm. and that could change things I mean personally I don't I don't have cable I, and the only reason I used to have cable was for the for the council meetings but now they're on YouTube and it's free so technically you don't really need cable like I said uh, I use direct TV and you have a lot of my friends are using internet now um, I mean I do have it from okay. internet that's the only issue you really you're, you're kind of limited on the internet mm -hmm. part of it I mean there is there is um, dial-up service that's slow mm -hmm. yeah. but from a TV perspective you know, you do have options. Yeah. But that was one of my ideas was to Dan, uh, let, let's reach out to DirecTV and maybe they have a corporate. Mm -hmm. And maybe he doesn't have uh, good phone skills uh, like I do, so I'm going to make some calls too. <laughs> thank, thank you for that, Councilman Melendez, uh, for that insight. Um, but I, I do think that it's, uh, I think that it's important, though, to also continue to, to authorize uh, our council and the administrator to at least write an appeal to a higher authority. When you have these um, cable companies and they're not willing to sit down and actually talk, and it doesn't seem that they have any motivation or will to even come back to the table, I think we need to seek out our elected officials to kind of push them to actually have to have conversations with their customers. So. Um, with that being said, um, make a motion to adjourn and clo well, we first close. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I apologize, Janice Benedetto. You're coming up. Yes. Come on up. Janice Benedetto, 1 Thomas Avenue in the Melrose section. Um, I had a couple of questions uh, regarding the uh, fairness hearing that's scheduled for uh, Thursday, uh, June 28th at 10 a.m. That's still the uh, date and time. As now far what, as I know, yes. Mm -hmm. And what actually happens at a fairness hearing so the uh, residents understand? The judge has to make a determination that the borough is in compliance with not only all of the uh, ordinances, but all the steps associated with uh, the, pl the um, um, document that Mrs. McKenzie has uh, sent to the court. Uh, Mrs. McKenzie had sent a uh, correspondence to the court on... Friday mm -hmm. or on Saturday uh, outlining uh, the recommendation the court will review this report that was uh, proffered and then go over all of the uh, ordinances oh, and all the it. steps that the uh, borough has taken and what steps need to be taken all right and is that something that a decision will be made at that time or will you have a decision come down uh, at a later date you know, it depends on the court's agenda and the court's time period, to be honest with you. There could be a, a decision made on that day. I just don't know what the, uh, what the court will do. Right, and is it something uh, uh, that anybody's really going to be speaking at, or is it uh, just a matter of presenting paperwork and having them uh, review things? I mean, uh, well, uh, every, there, there's always, whenever you appear in court, there will be speaking. There will be uh, arguments made for, and uh, the court will be somewhat relying heavily on the uh, report of Mrs. McKenzie that was generated on June 23rd. 
All right, because I know uh, Mr. Frankel had suggested that maybe the public would want to attend that, but it's not something the public can uh, uh, add to uh, in any way no, or speak record, at. Right, the record's already been uh, set forth, and the court now has to review the, the record as to whether it's fair. Mm -hmm. And the record meaning all of the uh, all paperwork? The pleadings, all the reports, all the ordinances, everything. Yes. Yeah. So uh, and to really have anybody take time off from work, it really doesn't sound like it would be a productive uh, uh, use of vacation time so, or well, uh, again, personal time. Well, again, you know what, time. depending on your priority, right, the time is the essence of your priority. So if this is a priority, you know, I think that uh, the court would invite everyone to attend. But again, just be aware that it is, you know, all the notices, all the reports, all the ordinances, everything that's been uh, generated the last year, the court will be reviewing. I, and um, now, uh, from what I was looking at the schedule, there's not another council meeting until July 23rd. That's correct. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, something might happen on the 28th or shortly thereafter. Who should we contact to find out the status? Um, it's either Mr. Mr. Frankel's appointment uh, here, so he'll probably let forth. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Frankel is very, uh, able body to report of any new developments um, but uh, I certainly will be uh, addressed oh that's right we have his number but again we'll, find well you'll you'll know uh, because if uh, while mr. Uh, Frankel may be may or may not be on vacation I'll certainly be in constant constant communication with the borough clerk all right, so Mike, is that something that's going to come as a written opinion, or, or no? It'll be it'll be action? it'll be it'll be a written opinion with so an order. So we just upload on the yep. yeah. on the website. Okay. Is it something that you'll put up on the website? When it, when it's received, we'll certainly send it out. All right, so we'll uh, look on the website, so we're not that much of a pest. But then on the other hand, Terry, uh, you're an email contact with Bev a lot, so maybe you can give us the heads up. Uh, uh, when you know of something, uh, so we don't have to keep bothering you. Um, and that uh, brings up a, a different issue. Tomorrow is the um, meeting here in the council chambers at 6 p.m. with the um, uh, MCUA. Uh, I am assuming that it was advertised so council members can attend uh, without mm -hmm. difficulty. Who's uh, planning on being in attendance? I am. I will be in double attendance, yes. So uh, yes to um, Ms. Novak and yes to Ms. Kilpatrick. I do have a conflict, so I will be back and forth, but yes, you will see me. All right, and Mr. Buchanan and uh, Mr. Limbo, or I should say council person, and uh, mm -hmm. I uh, uh, apologize for the uh, terminology uh, uh, problem. Uh, the other thing is, um, uh, the advertising of things like this, special uh, meetings and what have you, I thought the understanding was that it was going to go on the website and that it was going to go on Channel 15. Well, it is. It's not on Channel 15 as of uh, uh, this morning, uh, and I stopped looking and checking for it uh, around 12.30. When I received the email from Beverly and asking me if it is up, I had the girl who posts it for me go out and come back into the Sarah website, and she said that it was posted. And I responded to Beverly that it was posted, and it was in, I don't recall if she said just yellow or canary yellow or so, something in a yellow tone. Um, so she did confirm that for me that it was on. All right, on the website, uh, then Bev found it. Um, I was just referring to as of 12.30 today, Channel 15 on the cable vision. That's correct. It should be on both. It should be on both. We put it everywhere. Uh, well, I've been checking Channel 15, and I haven't seen it yet, and I've had it on for so very... We, can we check tomorrow on that, just to double check again? We'll After I have my cup of coffee, I'll make sure I do that immediately. <laughs> well, the other thi no. thing is, I mean, I watched it last week. I watched yeah. it then after it was supposed to be put on and things like that. Uh, so uh, uh, if that's going to be a good way of communicating with the public that we agreed upon, I would appreciate it if it's really on and it's given uh, enough time and uh, showings that I had it on for hours at a time and I would look up every time it changed from what I was working on and I never saw it on Channel 15. Okay. But, um Ms. Benedetto. Janice. Ms. Benedetto, I'm so, so, so sorry about that. Um, I checked with the girl who posted it for me. I will have our IT guy check it with me tomorrow. I will go on. It's 
individual personally and I'll make sure that it is up because she told me when I spoke with Beth that it was on the, as of the 19th I responded to you right and that was the information that I received uh, I didn't get any information back that it, somebody reviewed it and still didn't see it up I will personally go on it tomorrow morning and see that it is up um, and if it's not, I'm going to tell our IT guy, either way I'm going to tell him and say that the resident is still stating that I can see it, they can't see it, what's the problem? So I apologize if there was some miscommunication. I'm under the, under the impression that it has been posted as of the date that uh, the girl told me that, that uh, she put it up. All right, well, website. I didn't want to keep I do my best you. to put everything up, so I'm not trying to hide it, anything. The so. website does have a special section right on the front page. It says featured story, special meeting. That's on the website, but that's not Channel 15. No, no, I understand, that's but channel yeah. 15. Yeah. I don't know so if you can go watch Channel 15 over and see if it played at 1230. I'm not. Well, no, I, I had it on like from 11 to 1230 today. I periodically checked it for days now. Well, we could look I at mean, the content and see if it yeah. was yeah. part of the package, whether or not you saw it. I mean, we, we can check. It may be there, you think, but pretty something fast. may be malfunctioning. A little switch might not be turned yeah, it's on. It's pretty fast. But yeah. with the meeting coming um, uh, up tonight, I didn't want to keep bothering you, Terry, and having Bev emailing you and what have you when it was uh, uh, you know, coming up tonight. I think we're going to have one, two, three. I think we're going to have about four people on it for TV anyway. <laughs> uh, and my well, daughter, she's off and up, so I'm going to since they're home. So they need a homework assignment. I think they can sit there and watch for a little while tomorrow too, just to make sure. All right. Thank you, Janice. Because like the notice is up there for the new uh, water bills. It says they're going to come out, Mr. Frankel, in the envelopes now and all of that. That notice is up there, you know, uh, uh, a lot of things repeat and repeat and repeat, and I did not see that. I wouldn't bring it up if I had seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other uh, thing is now on the new water bills coming out in the envelopes, do you have the contact number on it for the MCUA uh, uh, complaints? The water bill and the MCUA are two different agencies, so we would not put the MCUA's phone number on the water bill. I thought we had decided that that was a way of communicating how the residents should be uh, uh, lodging complaints with the um, if there is a uh, odor in the air or what have you after uh, I, the engineer was here that putting it on I, the water bill was a way of getting the news out to the uh, residents of how they should uh, lodge a uh, complaint yeah can you double I don't remember I, I know I, I don't remember I don't remember yesterday. saying that the MCUA's phone number was going to be on the war, water and sewer bill so if the council desires for idea. if you want to put it on there there's, there's a that. certain amount well, if you of go back and listen to these televised uh, t films of the meetings and what have you it was discussed and I even asked one other time about whether it had been done and you said it wasn't going to be done until it was uh, the new bills came out in the envelopes yeah, I do remember we had that discussion. Dan, can you take a look at it? And then I know that there's limited space on that, but in the event that we can add that, it shouldn't be that, that large. I do remember having the discussion about having it on. I thought it was the water bill. I know at the last council meeting, we all had the copies of what the new bill was going to look like. I don't know if it's actually on there. I know there was a lot of uh, different sections of that. Mm -hmm. Can you just double check that for us, Dan? And if it's not there, see if we can find a way in order to put that on that page. Okay. Well, if that's Thank the way you. they said that we should lodge complaints, and they're saying they're no, not I getting agree. enough complaints lodged formally with the proper paperwork filled out, um, we need to uh, uh, follow their established procedure. Yes. Thank you on that. Thank Janice. you very I much. Uh, w one question on that: Are, are we offering? Is, are we offering people to uh, sign in for electronic billing on the water bills yet, so we can cut down on the mailings? Not as of yet. We're working on it, though. We are working on it. We had to work on getting the paper bill uh, perfect, so that right. goes out. So now we're going to work on electronic. Okay, good. Okay. And uh, Mr. Block. Just name an address for the record. Thanks. Yeah. Fred Block, 25 Calliope Road. Um, I'm really discouraged to hear what's going on with Cablevision. Um, and I guess I have one question to ask. Uh, is Do we have an option to go to bid? If they don't want to play ball with us, then let's go to bid. Let's put it out there that we're, we're interested in hearing from other companies who might be interested in working with us. That's a problem. Okay. There's no one else to bid to. 
we can't call the other cable company, which is um, Comcast, and say, can you come and be a service? It's a state. We could go, like I said earlier, like other services, like Dish Network, DirecTV. We can't, put, we can't post a notice and say we want to bid out to that we're going out to bid? I that's thought that's kind of how the process works. That's a state regulated. BPU, if I may, Mr. Block, BPU regulates this particular area. Uh, there are, as you know, uh, sectors that they've divided the state into. Um, I do know that uh, when we prepare a resolution, you know, outlining our complaints, it's my recommendation that we send it to BPU. Um, I'm familiar with the uh, some of the, the um, uh, personnel and the BPU just uh, having to deal with it. So once I get this resolution set forth and include all the complaints, uh, you know, I'm uh, then going to bring it to uh, BPU's attention and personally go up there and sit down and, and discuss the options that we have as a borough. Would we have the option of petitioning BPU to uh, look at the, the mapping um, <coughs> to possibly get I won't, the I other won't, company in I there? I won't know that until I get to BPU and discuss it <coughs> with their counsel. They have a number of attorneys up there um, that will deal with these type of complaints. So let's get the resolution uh, drafted and then uh, in the hands of BPU so that they understand where we're coming from and the complaints that uh, we as borough residents are having. But, yeah, but to his point, like, why can't we do this at a state level? Well, I think you know we're I mean, doing every town in New Jersey should have that option to be able to twofold. There's thing. a there's a two step process. It's just not the state. You've got to deal with BPU. BPU is the one that regulates these agencies. And just like I had the opportunity to meet uh, with Mr. Uh, Gavin regarding his issue, right? <clears throat> when I call BPU regarding the um, you know the charging of his particular uh, issue, they were right on point. They gave me the uh, a point. They gave me the documents that I needed. And that helped me resolving the case. So I think that once I get to BPU and address the resolution with BPU, I think, you know, between the state legislatures, the assembly persons, and BPU's own governance, I think that we've got some action. Okay, it sounds good. It just uh, it sounds to me like you're having the same roadblocks, and Mr. Frankel's running into the same roadblocks that I ran into as just a customer. You know, uh, as a borough, you know, they should listen to us a little bit. And if they're not listening to us. Uh, or the people. I mean, this is kind of what's an echo of what's happening these days. You know, you know, you call, you want to complain, you want to do something, you're trying to make change, but when nobody listens to you, you know, you kind of just go, you know, dumb to it all, and you don't want to do it anymore. Well, I so, think, I think, well, that's you know, why we want to go up this, the ladder. This with mayor, this. this council has has heard the complaints, so let me now go do what I did with uh, do what they did with uh, Mr. Gavern and uh, go knock on the door for, for BPU and for redress. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Steve. Not yet. Steve Melanaski, 28 Scarlet Drive in Portland. Just to add to the cave vision uh, debacle, and this is something that probably everybody's aware of, but maybe we can use it as some leverage. Net neutrality. All right. That's where the cable companies been by the Fed have been approved to package social media access under a separate umbrella like a, s a group of channels on your TV and charge for it. Maybe we could use that if it moves to that. I know the states are trying to fight it. I don't know if they can win over the, f over the Fed. But in the case of a lot of folks in the town, I know Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera, if the cable companies start to charge and block it together, so either you take the package, pay the fee or not, it's something maybe we could use it as some type of bargaining chip if we can get them to maybe when if it if and when it moves there go that way this is just informational i've heard it coming out and i just like i just can't believe we're going to have another hike for access to what you have now for free and that doesn't mean that one day they might stop access to netflix or any other other streaming devices and programs you have through the internet so just awareness thank you Thank you, Steve. Um, anybody else from the public? Do we have a motion to close the public, the public portion? portion be closed. Second. Roll call. Councilperson Buchanan. Yes. Grillo. Yes. Kilpatrick. Yes. Limbo. Yes. Melendez. Yes. Novak. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> so, second. Um, roll call. Councilperson Novak. Yes. Buchanan. Yes. Grillo. Yes. Kilpatrick. Lembo, yes. Melendez. All right, and we're just going to take a three-minute uh, little recess and we turn back for our second meeting. Thank you.
I've literally never gone to the shore of Northern Ireland. Yeah. 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 So, that's it. How about you? Where are you going? Tell him to call Mr. Nolan. Okay. Do you have an alarm on your house? Yeah. What do you have? I always love when I see it. Too. Oh. He calls. I always love to see yeah, it. Too. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, What's up, Jim? Yeah. My pleasure. Because they hit you for everything. Because I'm thinking about it. So I have some of the ice switch back in the wall. I'm not getting a better deal. I don't know. I mean, they got you. Hey, got her to turn around and come up here. Ladies and gentlemen, are we all set? All right, please rise I was for a <clears throat> salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Terry, statement of publication. Yes, take notice that this. Uh, the agenda session of the Mayor and Borough Council being held this 25th day of June 2018 has been advertised and posted in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Roll call. Council Persons Buchanan. Here. Grillo. Here. Kilpatrick. Here. Lembo. Here. Melendez. Here. Novak. Yeah. Um, let's see. I actually don't have my new, my new uh, 
Oh, no, we don't have any same? problem with them. Nope. No, thank you. Right to me. All right. <laughs> Going through old business. Um, any questions on the ordinances that were entered into in the last meeting? Sorry, is that well, really no questions? It just yeah. this is just noted that these ordinances will be listed for the next meeting because they were introduced at the uh, council session. Exactly what I said. Continue, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I go to communications. Yes. All right, me. Let's go down to communication committee reports. Councilwoman Novak, please. Administration and finance. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the minutes of department reports as listed under the agenda under A one, two, and three. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I'd like approvals for the applications for bingo and raffle licenses as listed under the agenda under B, one, two, and three. Is there a second? Second. Okay, uh, refer to tax council. A tax appeal received from Verizon. Any objection? Oh, where are we? Uh, on I got two oh, Bs, yeah, we're actually. Refer that to the tax collector. Yeah. I'm sorry, my tax apologies. Council. Tax council. Okay, under C, uh, request received for, uh, from the tax collector for the following authorizations. Uh, authorizing a refund of 2017-18 taxes in the amount of $3,319 and canceling all subsequent billing tax due portion of the taxes due to the approval of 100% disability veteran tax exempt uh, status for January 23rd, 2017 covering 52 Ash Terrace. Uh, that's going to be a resolution prepared by you, Terry? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, also under two, authorizing the tax collector to uh, process without further auction, action, action on the part of the governing body, the cancellation of any property tax refund and delinquency in the less of $10. Also a resolution by you, Terry? Yes. Anything else, Councilwoman Kilpat uh, Novak? <laughs> I almost called on myself. <laughs> Progress. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman Novak. <laughs> Planning and zoning, Councilman Lembo, please. Thank you, Council President. I uh, move the following minutes be received and filed. Construction officials report, zoning and code enforcement reports, all for the month of May. Second. Also the fire prevention report for the month of May 2018. Second. Also receive and file notice to adjacent community, notice of uh, ordinance introduced by the Township of East Brunswick adopting a redevelopment plan for the designation redevelopment area in the New Jersey local redevelopment and housing law. Receive sure. and file. Sure. Second. And we have a request for bond reduction received from Gillette Towers, 100 Kennedy Boulevard, which I'll refer to Jay. Okay. We'll have a report at a future meeting. Anything else, Councilman Lumbo? Progress, Council President. Thank you very much. Public Safety, Councilman Buchanan. Thank you, Acting Mayor. I move that the following minutes be received and filed. The construction, oh, I'm sorry, the, um, where are we at? Board of Health Minutes. Board of Health Minutes. How did I skip my I gotcha. back up? <laughs> Board of Health Minutes of May 3rd, 2018. Board of Health and Registrar's Report for the month of May 2018. And the Municipal Court Administrator's Report for the month of May 2018. Second. Uh, I'd like to approve uh, the application of firefighter Kevin Gay, uh, which was accepted by President Park Fire Company on May 7th, 2018. Any objection? And also like to, well, not like to, but accept the letter of resignation received from firefighter Kevin <laughs> Krolik from engine company number one, effective May 24th, 2018. Any objection? Anything else, Councilman? Oh, yes, D. One. Letter D, uh, Terry, everything's in order. With Everything the, is in order, yes. And I'd like to have a uh, letter D approved for the Cerebral Soccer Association's coin toss. You All in problem. favor? Good. Okay. Um, I'd like to congratulate the class of 2018 from Cerebral High School. Um, it, you know, I, I believe the ceremony went off uh, okay. I know there was some iffiness with the weather, yeah. uh, but I'd like to congratulate all of them and wish them well in their, their next adventure. Um, I have one other thing, uh, but I'm going to ask to wait to hold off until Mike's back. Okay. So in that progress. Thank you very much, Councilman Buchanan. Recreation, Councilman Melendez. Thank you. Um, item A, the uh, Recreation Director's Report for the May of um, for, for May 2018 received and filed. Second. Um, just a recreation report. Um, registration is ongoing for this year's summer programs. We have a multitude of uh, sports from soccer to football and field hockey. The uh, registration is still available on cerebralrec.com. Oh, and, and this Saturday, June 30th, is the 4th of July celebration. 
starting at 4 p.m. Free rides from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. There's a hot dog eating contest at 6.30 for you, Steve. <laughs> um, <laughs> <just kidding. laughs> Live musical <laughs> entertainment from 7 p.m. to 9.30 with the uh, fireworks going off at 9.30 p.m. Anything else, Councilman? Um, just, uh, and I'll let Steve, when he gets to his report, we did have a meeting on the water um, security um, situation that we have at the water plant. So um, Steve will evaluate further on that, and then I'll discuss any technical issues. Thank you very much. Uh, Steve, before I go over to you, since we have our uh, attorney um, returning, okay. are you going. sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Councilman Guerrillo, please, water, sewer, and environmental. Thank you, Acting Mayor. Uh, I move that the following minutes and be received and filed the water and sewer director's report for the month of May 2018. Second. Second. Um, I do have a couple of items, uh, a few for Dan, uh, just some follow-ups, but I, I will uh, take Ricky's cue. Uh, for those of you who remembered our last meeting, we talked about uh, some of the concerns that we had regarding uh, fencing at the Capric Preserve and the three lagoons uh, that are uh, potentially uh, utilized for our water supply. Um, so uh, we met with the water and sewer director today as well as the consultant that Ricky's been working with. Um, we are going to have both of those gentlemen work with Dan Frankel uh, to have the DEP come down and actually do a uh, on the ground analysis of what security issues they are concerned with um, and come back to us with some ideas that hopefully in the end will not result in any of that area being fenced off um, to actual recreation users. Um, so um, I, I imagine by our next council meeting we will have some results on that, um, but we will be uh, sticking to that. So just wanted to give you an update um, and hopefully we will know uh, by the end of the month. Uh, a couple of other things, um, let's see. Dan, the efficiency audit meeting you were trying to have Wednesday is that happening or no he first it was on then it was off I called him again this morning to get an answer he was on vacation today so I'm gonna have to get back to you tomorrow okay okay and uh, if two of my colleagues want to join they're more than welcome oh, um, if, they if anybody uh, this is the efficiency audit we had talked about uh, Dan had found a, a group that does municipal efficiency audits so I certainly would be happy if anybody else wants to join obviously there can only be two of us but or three of us in total, uh, to addition to me. But uh, it would be Wednesday at 4 o'clock, maybe, kind maybe. of, sort of. Right. Um, so Dan, if you get a confirmation on that, do you want to send it out to the council and then yes, see who can, see sure, who can, who can make it? Sure, absolutely. That would be great. Um, so that, that, um, um, let's see. Uh, Dan, I'd, I'd asked in an email, if this is actually from the Environmental Commission, there was a $50,000 appropriation for plantings on MacArthur. And the Environmental Commission had asked if that had ever gone out to bid um, because it, it's to their opinion that the it's never been put out to bid nor spent and they want to know why um, because they're gonna miss the fall planting season if we don't actually go out to bid and get that taken care of I thought that it is. I, th I know we appropriated it yeah, and that's but, but I think that's all that happened at least the Environmental Commission thinks that's all that happened and I don't have a recollection of receiving any bids that we've discussed but it's time sensitive because if it doesn't get done now, we'll have to wait till the spring of 2019. That it's going to come out of Shade Tree. I thought it was too. I thought it was yep, coming out of is. Shade Tree. And I th yep. I think Dan Yell had it at Let one me, point. I'll get yeah. back to you first thing in the morning. Okay. Yeah, there's okay. just yeah. some confusion yeah. as to who's responsible. Yep. Um, and oh, the pro forma is the final thing. Steve, pay attention. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we received an email, all of us in the council, uh, dated. Friday the 22nd of June. It's a, a short presentation prepared by Hire Gruel, uh, the borough planner. Uh, this is a, a pro forma they did for Washington t Township to look at the impact on the schools. Um, they do reference that, uh, it's my understanding, the proposal from Sayreville uh, will be more detailed, but they wanted to show us what they did. Um, it's a fairly uh, in-depth analysis of, of school children impact. Um, I have some ideas, including roads, sewers, police, fire, EMS, circulation plans, park space, uh, youth and senior programs, public transit, other things that I would recommend that they analyze as well. Um, so I don't know what we want to do as a governing body if we all want to submit our suggestions to Dan and then pass it on to Susan. Susan. Yes, uh, that's I, the most expeditious way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know that Susan does have her ideas of what she is going to be researching. I think it's probably going to overlap some of the things that we want. But if there's something that she may not have considered, I think that is the best way to go through Dan and have it forwarded over. But I agree with you. I thought that that was at least, uh, you know, a step in the right direction to show a comparison between, you know, another township and where we are. Mm -hmm. And I think it was based on the Rutgers breakdown that we usually use when it comes to the number of school aged children. That's the um, typically what we use to follow that projected um, number. 
and it's been pretty accurate. I know that it was what was used when we did the Chase Partners um, redevelopment project, which was over in Morgan, and literally that was spot on. Actually, yes. we came on a little bit below yep. what the Rucker study had um, anticipated we were going to get. So um, it, it's not surprising that she would use that uh, as well for this. So if my colleagues would uh, abide, I, I think we should all just submit our ideas perhaps by the end of the week and have Dan push that on. But Dan, thank you for doing this. I know um, this was an add on to a very complicated process, but it, it needs to get done. So I appreciate you yep. taking the lead on that. Uh, and that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman Grillo. And it looks like public works. So um, I'll move through my minutes and departmental reports. Um, I move uh, the public works supervisor's reports building, uh, for buildings and grounds, parks, recycling, roads, and sanitation, as well as garage service services, all for the month of May 2018. Second. And under uh, my committee reports, I actually just have, other than to echo um, Councilman Buchanan's um, congratulations to the uh, class of 2018, both at the high school as well as the promotion of our eighth grade students. Um, luckily, the weather did uh, stay um, pretty fair for us, and it's never a good idea to have to bring the students inside um, because then parents miss out on that opportunity. So um, it's always nice to be able to, um, uh, you know, entertain and have everybody out there on the field. So um, congratulations to all those and um, the best of success and luck in the future. With that, I do need to move on to just one question. Um, today, a couple of complaints were forwarded to me with some pictures, and I'm going to go over to Jay. Roosevelt Avenue, um, many residents are very concerned about that. It, um, it is in a state of disrepair from what I could see from the pictures. It looks like just a portion of the road. Now, I double-checked with... Um, our Public Works Director, Bernie Bailey. I believe that um, Roosevelt, which is in the President Parts section, is actually on our partial road um, uh, list. Can you just give me a, a time frame or an update of where we are with it, just so that the residents that this is impacting um, can hear it at least directly from the microphone and from tonight's meeting? Yes, uh, Roosevelt Boulevard was on the initial list, a certain section identified by Public Works. Uh, we've prepared plans and specifications since then they've gone and added a couple other areas to the list so we're, we're finalizing that so it should be advertised for bid probably early next month so okay. i would anticipate construction probably in the september time frame we okay. just we just uh, passed the bonding order yes i do remember passing that i just wanted to give at least the residents that were watching i know i had text messaged quite a few people and said watch tonight's meeting or at the very least contact me again so i can give them the update so again what was the month that we anticipated if we get bids we'll award a contract possibly at the july meeting worst case would be the august meeting because of your summer schedule so construction probably would start in the september time frame yes so i wish the i could approval for the uh, a water tower road uh, i spoke with yes okay. i already yes that was the other one so thank you for that um other than that i'm going to say progress and then uh comes over to my comments so i'm going to go over to the business administrator uh, Council President. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. Real quick. Yes. Um, earlier when we were passing those ordinances for the uh, COA issues, um, a resident made a comment or question, uh, is the mayor going to sign these, veto them? Um, procedurally, I, I was pretty annoyed last at the last meeting. Um, the mayor has been sitting here 20 years and, and the procedures um, that he wasn't following. Can you just for our edification, for the resident's edification, decide, decipher between an ordinance and a resolution and how the mayor should be uh, could act on those once well, they're passed by the council typically um, a resolution isn't vetoed it's simply uh, either not executed or not approved uh, an ordinance uh, the mayor has 10 days in which to uh, sign the ordinance if it's not then he must uh, within that time period prescribed uh, provide a written explanation as to his veto or he could return it unsigned yep and then the council would have to act, no action on the unsigning of the ordinance or if it's a veto it'd have to be um overturn the veto with a two correct two thirds journey. correct i'm asking if you could just send a memo to the mayor advising him of the procedures that he should have known for the last 20 years i will certainly um you know if that's what the um uh, wants I'll, I'll make sure that i sit down with the borough clerk and prepare uh, the memo in accordance with uh, the rules thank you Thank you very much for that, Dan. I appreciate that clarification. I look forward to seeing that um, going out and see if there's any response. Um, with that, we'll move on to the business administrator's report. Uh, Mr. Frankel. Thank you, Mayor. Request received from police chief to hire six police officers to attend the Cape May Police Academy in late August. And do we, we have funds for that? Yes. For six, because they've retired, yes. 
We do. I thought we only had funds for four, five, excuse me. We had one uh, uh, who was in the academy who dropped right. out? Yeah, we have to, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure we had, I'm pretty sure the number is six. I'll check with, with Denise tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure it was six. I'll confirm it with you tomorrow. Okay. But subject to the confirmation? Yep. Yes, yeah, subject, okay. subject to confirmation with the CFO. Authorization to purchase SCBA equipment from New Jersey Fire Equipment of, fire of Greenbrook to New Jersey State Contract T07090 AB0961 in an amount not to exceed $243,399. Okay. 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 Authorization to award a contract to Condoris through New Jersey State Contract M0483 A89967 for public safety complex server virtualization and storage in an amount not to exceed $52,561.12. Any objections? I know what that is. That's Authorization to reversed. award a contract to Video Corporation of America through New Jersey State Contract T1466. A81124 for the furnishing and installation of video conferencing system in the Office of Emergency Management into an ex in amount in an amount of fifty-four thousand nine hundred dollars, nine hundred fifty dollars. This was a FEMA reimbursement. Any objection? Authorization to extend the contract with Rachel's Michelle Oil Company for the provision of gasoline and diesel fuel for one additional two-year term. Any objection? Authorization to award a contract to Field Turf USA through the Keystone Purchasing Network. Contract 201801-1 for the resurfacing of War Memorial Park basketball court and the labyrinth resurfacing in a labyrinth resurfacing in an amount not to exceed eighty-two thousand eight hundred sixty-five dollars. Any objection? Authorization to waive road restoration requirements in Ordinance 13-1-10 and approve PSENG to pave from curb to center line on Buttonwood Drive, Cypress Drive, Willow Court, and Cedar Terrace. And objection. I have an objection. Okay, so let's have a discussion. <laughs> Um, I know that our ordinance is very clear on this, that when there is a third party opening of a roadway that the actual paving needs to be from curb to curb. Um, if you've driven around our town, you know that we've had uh, quite a few openings from PSE and G, other third parties, and you're only seeing that roadway being um, paved uh, you know, to midline. Um, at, at this point, um, and I'll let the, my other council members speak on this, uh, this is something I think we need to adhere to our ordinance on. Um, especially in this particular area, but moving forward when it comes to other road reopenings, w we really need to make sure that these roads are being covered from curb to curb. Number one, it puts an additional strain on our public works employees. The road openings are often um, then cracking down the middle or we're being brought in then to do repairs like what you see on Roosevelt Boulevard. That one is actually, you can see it, it appeared that that was another midline opening. So now what was left open um, is another burden now for us as taxpayers to have to pull out of our public works and road repaving um, jobs. But I'll let... Um, you know, Councilwoman uh, Novak, uh, Buchanan, and the, the rest, if you have any additional comments in reference to that. Well, you, usually when somebody requests a waiver, they do it prior to the work. What PSC&G did here was they went around and dug up several roads in Laurel Park without even getting a road opening permit, right. yeah. and then just filled in a trench, which is now heaving in some places and indentation in other places. And when it was brought to their attention that they didn't follow any procedure, now they want a waiver because I, I have no problem sometimes with, you know, giving people waivers on certain things, but to, to give them a waiver now after the fact, I, I can't approve that. Um, so what can we do? Can we make, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Did anybody else want to comment on that? And yes, um, thank you, um, Councilwoman Novak. It was brought to my attention that, yes, they did not get the proper road opening um, paperwork in line and turned around and did do that. I, I, I think that's an additional slap in the face, but I do think we need to be as consistent as we can be when it comes to our ordinance. Um, if anybody else um, wants to comment, if not, I would make Could I, could I comment? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, we did have a meeting. We brought PSENG to the table. Um, we discussed uh, with our road supervisor and our public works director that these four roads were not done uh, or not fixed properly. 
um, PSE&G went out and inspected it. They recognized that the job was not done well. Um, I'm not so sure these four roads were not the ones that they got road openings for. I'm not quite sure. There were other roads that they did not get road openings. They didn't get for these either. Okay. So um, their suggestion was because they make about a two foot wide uh, trench and they probably do it on a quarter of the roadway for a quarter away from the curb. Um, this is for the modernization of gas pipes. Um, part of their modernization of the pipes itself, which are decaying and are getting older, is they have X amount of money in a pot. And therefore, I'm saying it, I understand your point of view, but our point of view is we wanted to get those pipes also modernized. And they did come to us with discussion prior to this um, that they would need to pave half of the road or from center line to the curb. The previous road supervisor did not have any problem with that. The uh, public works director was not uh, pro or con, was actually quiet about this. Um, we have done it previously and it seemed to work. These restorations are restorations for a patch job that Councilwoman Novak and Kilpatrick are correct were a two foot patch job that didn't work very well. My understanding is that the jobs that they did from the center line to the curb line on other streets have been fine according to our road supervisor of the past and a road supervisor of the present. So to say they're looking for a waiver, we put this on because we wanted council to understand what they wanted to do. I think this is a better compromise than saying I'm not going to do it because we'll be left with a two foot trench and that's it. Moving forward, we also negotiated and we did take the ordinance in mind. If any of you have passed Canal Street, they did the same thing from the MC UA, MC UA all the way out to a new gas line, all the way out to MacArthur, which is a very long roadway uh, on Canal. And we demanded that they would follow the ordinance and go from curb to curb. Um, after negotiation, they've agreed. So we did not put that on this uh, as far as restoration because they followed the ordinance. Um, the other one was a certain pot of money. So if we do not authorize the waiving of it, we'll be left with a two foot trench in this regard that it's, it's not a good solution in my eyes. Moving forward, if the council wants to do it from curb to curb, they will not come into the town with the, with the pot of money they have and they probably won't agree to modernize some of these gas pipes if they have to do it because of the pot of money. Or, or if we decide that they want to do it, maybe, they, maybe we negotiate by doing half of the road and they do half of the road. But I know what the ordinance is. I know what this resolution is to this. I think this is a good resolution for these four streets. So wait a minute, though. Um, in reference to these particular streets, did I hear you correctly when you said that in the event that we don't move this forward, that we we're going to be left with these trenches that were dug when they didn't even get the proper road opening permits? I would think that that would be some type of a violation of our procedures, policies, and ordinances. I don't know how they can turn around, open something, leave it in that respect, and then turn around and think they can walk away without the repair when they didn't follow our procedures and we have an ordinance that clearly states what they're supposed to do. Why, why do we have ordinances if we don't grant the waiver, just they just telling, leave us I with a two-foot ditch? I am telling you That's what was ridiculous. discussed in the meeting. If you want to not give the authorization, I don't know when the roads are going to be fixed. Um, what can we do, um, Council, when it comes to a situation like this? I mean, I don't like being um, yeah, You know bullied. what, rather than uh, denying this, uh, it sounds like there's a resolution uh, that can be had, I would withdraw this authorization and just uh, specifically outline the resolution in writing so that the, uh, the mayor and council understands uh, what uh, Mr. Frankel just put on the record and what the options are. Is anybody opposed to uh, at least? I just, I mean, to say that our only option is to just going to leave the two-foot trench is ridiculous. Yeah, I think, I, I, th I think that if you, instead of denying it, and it appears that um, 
Mr. Frankel is correct in many of his, <clears throat> in all of his comments, but I think in order to out, uh, truly understand the resolution and settlement, I think that you, rather than just simply um, deny it, um, I think maybe we can expand on this authorization uh, a little bit at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah, it'd have to be a resolution. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's a resolution, have but I think be. it's setting forth a little more uh, in detail as to what, what steps they are willing to take and what steps we agree to. Dan, um, when you had your conversations with them, um, do they have a, a, a plan on the streets that they're going to be working on? Or are they coming to go, is their plan to go to all the streets? That's my question. No, they have a plan. They're going to come to, they're going to come as this modernization takes place and say that they've, they're addressing certain streets that they are, the, that their gas pipes are old. And they so this is every year? Or this is every year. They have, they're, mon they're putting money aside every year to do streets. And they should be coordinating with our, with our, our, with yeah. our engineer and our, our road improve yes. improvement plan. They're uh, not even getting road opening permits. Yeah, I think we need to harness this a little bit because I think look, that we look have what they're doing in Morgan right now. I what know. We, we, we've held, the, our, our contractors are getting antsy. We awarded bids to pave the streets. We've been waiting for over a year. We got metal plates on the roads over there. They dig a hole and then they disappear for months. And it's not just our, our contractors residents that are getting antsy. Our residents deserve better. And we need to make sure that we hold the third party road openings and those individuals accountable for that because this is a quality of life i drive through morgan all the time and it's deplorable you can't go up that street at all oh. and the residents have been living with that for a very 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 long time over a year I mean, now. and you live in that area so i know coming off of 35 it is literally an absolute disaster i can't imagine what it's like for the kids that live is on that, that a pseng project yes it is yes it is okay can you please give me the name of the street so i can make the contact that i have with Steven psng and, um, is that stevens yeah, i think Steven. it is norton stevens. and Vin and, and Vin vineyard vineyard that's been a vineyard. long time yeah Exceptionally over a year long time so, so dan let me just ask you have you had any substantive conversations with PSNG, pse and g about their long-term uh gas improvement plan because they're uh, i uh, i have in a 30,000 foot level I haven't had it on a specific on the ground level with them because they they go through it every year themselves so I, I've, I've worked in utilities and in the construction side in Manhattan um, where you're digging up stuff all the time and uh, the key and, and the paramount issue and, and I hope that we can get this out of PSE and G is redundancy right when you're doing a street opening it should be done in coordination with a cable company it should be done in coordination with the water and sewer department we don't want to keep opening up streets if we know that a company pse and g is going to be doing this year after year after year we need to coordinate their long-term plan with our long-term plan construction the other thing that we have to be aware of and i get all your points they're only modernizing because they're going to make more money right <laughs> they're putting in more efficient lines and newer lines so that they can make more money doing what they do and um i have a lot of trouble feeling bad for a utility mm -hmm. i'm a guy who worked for the largest utility in the country they've got plenty of money mm -hmm. and so if they're ripping up our streets that's your tires that are getting flat yep. they're not paying for that all right mm -hmm. those are that's asphalt that hits your windshield they're not paying for that and to hear oh well we can compromise and they can pay for half the street and we can pay for half the street I'm going to try that next time I say, hey, PSCNG, why don't you cover half my bill and I'll cover the other half. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you one thing that's not going to happen. And so, um, and, and I, I'm, I'm being a bit over the top just to drive the point home, but I, I, and I appreciate what you're doing here, Dan, but I think the key is if this is going to be a long-term plan for their benefit, we need to make sure that they're being as clear and as concise with us as possible because we do not want these streets especially in an old town like this being opened up over and over and over again they're going to be the major culprit it's going to cost us a lot in the, in the end so um I, I agree with the council president uh kilpatrick we got to rein this in it's yep. now on our radar they should come in and give us a full explanation of their capital plan in this town for at least the next five years. Absolutely, and then that plan has to be reviewed by our engineers and by our DP and by our uh, DPW director, so that we can all be on the same page. Um, th that's important, and I don't put, think that's something that's been done. Put three million dollars into roads every year. Absolutely, for them to potentially just go right behind us and, and open the road up again. Mm -hmm. wasn't that long um, to you know, that's why we need to be informed, cost. and that's why they need to get the permits paving. from us first. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> you know, and then on top of that, we we're, we're looking at another almost nine hundred thousand dollars when we're going to be opening up stuff for our water and sewer. Mm -hmm. You know, 
coordinate. Let's all coordinate. Exactly. So uh, can I get a? Oh, I'm other. sorry, Councilman no, Randolph. Okay. I just wanted to move this particular issue away because it sounds like we're all saying the same thing here. Yeah, we're going to pull it so back. So can I get a motion to uh, withdraw this for now? So moved. Second. Can I get a second? Just have, nothing. We just have to approve Okay. It. All those uh, in favor? Aye. Okay. And then, um, Council, what would be the best step to, uh, moving forward to uh, well, I think direct? What, I think what we'll do is that the next time um, uh, set up a meeting with Mr. Frankel and I and PSC and G and then, you know, outline some of the concerns that the Mayor and Council have. Now, in reference to these particular roads, I want to see this addressed sooner rather than later. So what's the, uh, you know, uh, quickest amount of turnover time that we can get as far as coordinating how we're going to address these particular streets now and then moving forward with a bigger plan as we go through with the remaining roads that they were wishing to do? This is something that I, I want to hope to have a timeline on so we can hopefully move forward with our next meeting. So can we set something up so that way this gets ironed out and can be readdressed when I'll, we come back I'll together? Work, I'll work with Mr. Frankel tomorrow on it. Okay, thank you. Are we all in agreement with that? Yes. Okay, perfect. Let's move on forward. Mr. Frankel, you're still going? Special event application received from the Darrell Aquam School of South River to conduct a prayer service on August 20th or 21st, 2018 in Kennedy Park from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Prayer service to include activities including a picnic and inflatables, et cetera. Please review your report. Um, I did review our reports and there was a request from our DPW director that this event be moved to Berks Park. Um, so is that something that we need to make an amendment for here? They well, asked to go to Berks Park. We've asked them to go to Berks Park. They feel they would. They are asking to go to Kennedy Park. Um, in light of, um, I believe it was uh, just this past weekend, that was it the same type of a event that we incurred additional costs as far as overtime, um, I believe a police presence, the number of people that they originally had intended to have, which far exceeded that. I think there was a report. I know there was one they in mind. They didn't have insurance either. And they, they had, had insurance. Change, they did have yeah. insurance. Okay. Um, I think there was some concern about some of the activities that were being held and what was originally being. Um, just the, it was just the fact of the matter is, is that that special event permit application that the mayor and council approved was for a prayer service period end of story mm -hmm. beginning at which we negotiated the time because of school being is still in session um, from um, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the afternoon uh, all of a sudden I'm getting phone calls from our our, our parks super uh, supervisor telling us that the parking lot is jammed they have floaty fl inflatables and jumpies and all kinds of other activities there's food trucks and vendors they were supposed to come in have a prayer service and, and it was indicated to me that it would be some sort of a picnic type of thing where they would have picnic tables or whatever and have just that sort of food not food vendors or anything to the nature of that that they did have that's why I just wanted to bring it to the mayor and council's attention of the type of event that it did turn out to be. It was over 700 people. They were all packed into Kennedy Park. Parking was a huge issue. Um, I understand that they did hire a police service. I don't know what happened with that police service, but I understand that our officers were down there and they incurred um, uh, to overtime or the, off the patrols to be on, down in Kennedy Park to help with some issues that were going on there, as well as our DPW having to go down there after, well after the service was supposed to be over and they were still down there on overtime cleaning up the parks. Yes, overtime was incurred. Yes, they will be billed. So it's up to the mayor and council what type of event you want to approve before you tonight. So does this new application reflect all of these I, I made sure that it did. I did make sure that it did. So I don't know whether or not you had the opportunity to review that application and review the comments that were made and emails that were passed back and forth between all the other departments. I'm sorry I included a lot of paper in that, but I just thought it was important. Sure. So do we want to have a discussion about this? What, I, I have ahead. a question for you, actually. Um, you had mentioned that this was going to they the Public Works Department had asked to move this from Kennedy to Burks. Yes. What was the reason stated to do that? Um, that was exactly what uh, uh, Terry had stated. Um, Bernie had written out exactly how much overtime was incurred by the um, supervisors over there. The amount of trash that was actually picked up was over 40 bags. Um, again, the unsafe conditions in reference to um, the time uh, that this activity was going of why, on. Why would it be different at Burke Park? What difference does it make? Yeah. Right. What's it, that? What's the difference at Burke Park versus Kennedy? Um, like you why know would what? that make it better? I think for also Burke's Parks have have lavatories that are closer to the Grove area versus lavatories. Facilities. I, 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 like, I, like to be very I like to be very, very careful when we're talking about religious services. 
um, and not being arbitrary yes, about denying anything to anyone. No, um, not trying to. And so I would just like an understanding of why. There was one other thing. Also requesting, it's also requesting a picnic, and there's no picnic grove at Kennedy Park, whereas yeah. Burke's Park would have a picnic grove. And I think one of the other major issues in Kennedy Park, you do not have a traffic light that enables people to come in and out of there if there's a large amount of people, whereas at Burke's Park, you actually have a control of traffic with a traffic light, which makes for pedestrian traffic a lot safer. Um, Kennedy Park, you have a bus stop. You have a lot of you know foot traffic going to and from the shop rights. Um, at Berks Park, with that light, it creates a much safer um, intersection and passage when it comes to the cars and pedestrian traffic. Thank you for the explanation. Uh, so. if, That's a good reason. If they did go right alone, it's a very good reason. Yeah. Yeah. Gate picnics are on there, isn't it? So. They also Gate pay. Gate picnic is in October, but I think this is during the week. I'm sorry, in August. August this, this is August, August. No yeah, the 20th. <laughs> or uh, the 20th or 21st. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I think this is during the week. Um, so that weekend right around there. My birthday's the 19th. It's a Monday or a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah it's, it's during out. the week, I believe. It is. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's Monday the 20th. It is right, yeah. Monday. Okay. So um, at this point, do we want to move forward with the request from the um, DPW director with the move to Berks Park? Um, Our recreation director also suggested the, 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 that they move to Berks Park also. I think you're right. I didn't receive his. I did receive maybe uh, Councilman Melendez. You might have received yeah, Jerry yeah. since that's your department. Jerry but called me the same day. So I and I exactly do know that. Councilman Buchanan, I know, was alerted by the police department, I believe, about their concerns as well. So, um, and I agree with you, Steve. I don't, there you go. Yeah, it's cold in here. Me too. Yeah. Obviously, I want people to be as comfortable as they, as they can be and be able to have the whatever type of festivities and celebration. I think in this situation, I think safety airs on the side of Berks Park being a much better uh, venue. So could so. we respond formally on why we think Berks Park is a better so. venue for them, not just... Do Project. we need to deny this and then have it? How do we need to proceed? Well, uh, there would uh, we would need a resolution authorizing them to have this prayer service, and it would be your choice as to where the prayer service would be held. And given the reasons as you discussed tonight between the borough attorney and I, I think we could put something together um, so that it would be. Um, no. Because we only have one meeting before them. That's the reason exactly. why. That's so the reason why the quick listing tonight. Perry, um, with that though. If there's a parking issue, they'd have to go to the Board of Ed at the middle school there. Typically, that's where the overflow is for, for picnics in Berks Park. So they would have to then get permission and authorization from the Board of Ed as well. If well, we then we would, we would put that in the resolution. Mm -hmm. okay. Considering that school is not in session, and right. um, I, I think that the... Um, that shouldn't be a problem. But you should add it. It's a good point, Dan. Yeah, that is a good point. Thank you. Close right there. You don't have to cross the street. Yeah, and there's a path that actually comes from the middle school that's already been, you know, um, asphalt to put down. So, um, do you have the direction in what you in which you need Terry to move forward, or do we need to do anything additional here? Well, we're going. I have the author. Well, you're telling me that you want the picnic to be moved from Kennedy Park to Berks Park. This will need to be approved by uh, by via resolution because of the expenses that will be incurred and will be billing. So we will have a resolution on at the next meeting again that uh, Mike and I will work out and hopefully will be um, acceptable to them. And if not, I don't know what else to say. And, and, and we'll see. Um, are we all in agreement with that here? Just, yeah. just one other question if you're going to go through and because of one more meeting, are we going to decide the uh, cost, the rent, Berks Park? Are we going to cost, uh, have a that, bond? We already that have that on. That's already uh, established in our ordinances. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I think Jerry indicated to me that it would even be cheaper for them to have the, the event at Berks Park, Park other than having it at uh, Kennedy Park. Okay. Yes. <coughs> so, um, water and sewer then? Can you mind? I got a couple. I've been stealing all of them. Yeah, still there. <laughs> boy, oh boy. <laughs> Authorization to purchase one F-250 pickup truck through New Jersey State contract T2100A88727 and one F-350 pickup truck through the ESCNJ contract 17-18-21 from Buyer Ford of Morristown, New Jersey, an amount not to exceed $64,616.41. Any objection? Will these be uh, fit Yes. Away? What? Oh. Pardon me? Pardon me? Yes. 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 Plows and four-wheel yes. drive? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> request for authorization. Several times on there. Yes. The request for authorization <laughs> for special counsel <laughs> for water. William Northgrave to represent the borough in restoring the Duhernal water allocation to original amounts prior to June 13th, 2007. Any objection? Moving on. That's it. All right. CFO's report. Ms. Bianca. 
Thank you. And Borough Engineer's report, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just one item, the Hercules Village Water and Sewer. We uh, received the bids for that project, so subject to the adoption of the two ordinances you introduced this evening at your next meeting. We'd like to have a resolution awarding that contract. That's all I have. Thank you. Any objection with that? Thank you very much. Nothing for executive session? No, ma'am. Excellent. Then uh, public portion, any comments from the public? Mr. Block, one more time for me. And congratulations on your daughter's graduation. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it's funny. I have uh, one that's going into high school and one that just left high school. Mm -hmm. uh, so two freshmen. <laughs> kind of weird, right? Double celebration for you this. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I apologize in advance. Uh, I really know everybody wants to go home. I do have a couple things that I want to bring up. Fed Block, 25 Calliope Road. Um, I'm really happy to hear that there's some progress being made on Cross Ave. Um, I know that there's been, Dan will tell you too, and Jay will tell you, I've been talking about Cross Ave for a long time, uh, particularly with regard to motorcycles. I ride a motorcycle. In fact, I'm here with mine. And... That road uh, is a travesty. It's not uh, a road. You know, it's extremely unsafe. Um, you know, especially on motorcycles. Uh, I've, you know, and I can also be honest with you, I can't even begin to imagine what happens to the fire trucks that have to go down that road every day, that are just getting beat up by it. Um, so I'm happy to hear that. Um, that leads me to Minisync, though. Um, so going back to the motorcycle thing. The real concern here uh, for me is that the area which is the worst is hidden under shade. Mm -hmm. So when you're driving in bright sun, you know, even with good glasses and everything, when you, get, when you begin your approach to the bridge, you cannot see the road surface until your eyes readjust to the darkness and now it's too late and you're getting pummeled. That area has been atrocious. I know we're patching it. It's not working. Jay, where are we with anything on that as far as um, uh, cutting that particular section out? We know where it is under the train trestle bridge yeah, there. It's actually which same, is same response as Roosevelt Boulevard. It's all included in that partial road contract that's mm -hmm. going to be going out to bid, so you'll probably see construction in the September time frame. So they're not going to do, because like if you go, f when you say partial, how, how much of the road is going to be? Cause no, it, not, not the entire length, just a section near the railroad, and, and it's as you're going up toward uh, Washington Road. Right, because that's another really bad section. Those are the two sections that the Public Works Department highlighted needed special repairs that they couldn't do, so it's going to be done as a separate contract. And those will be done with like, you know, digging it up, you know, that's putting it out, resurfacing. So it'll right. be milled and then repaired. Got it. All right, perfect. That's, that's great to hear. Because um, the, uh, the other thing that I've pointed out and I've seen also is many people are also driving into the opposing lanes to avoid going over the roadway, which you can't blame them. Um, I spent $700 fixing my car this year on, on you know, problems with that. Um, there was also some discussion about Ernston Road. Um, some people seem to, to welcome the paving work and some are saying that it's not the greatest job in the world and that there's still uh, a lot of ripples all along the roadway that don't show that it's nice and smooth. Um, has anybody heard that or? I haven't heard that, but um, have we? Actually, yeah, you, we're aware of the issues and the DOT has a test that can be performed to determine whether the road rideability is, a, is done to an acceptable level. And in their requirements, there could be penalties if it's not. So there's a test that's being done to determine what those parameters are and if they've been met. If, if they have not been met and there's problems, the contractor's going to have to come back and take care of repairing it. But yeah. if it, meet the t it meets the tolerances, then it'll be allowed to stay as it is. And that portion of the roadway is ours, right? It's not, correct. It's not county or anything. That's correct, right. yes. Okay. I mean, so it's nice that it got paid. I can tell you, especially again on my bike, I can notice a huge difference. It's phenomenal. But you do feel that, that little jitter on many of the places. So. I don't know what led to it. Will we um, know when that inspection is being done by then, when they do that test? They are in the process of scheduling it. We haven't paid the contractor for yeah, they haven't a closed good anything portion out, of right. the road work because of that problem. So it's to their advantage in order to get paid to get it done as soon as possible. Thank you, Jay. It's really good to hear that something is being done. That's really, that's really good. Uh, last thing. Um, I don't remember what I was doing, uh, but uh, I ended up, oh, probably from, from the carnival. I went down MacArthur and Weber and why is it that the lots are like 
in dire need of a cut. Like it seems to me that the grass is That's pretty tall on some of the some of the lots or along the waterfront. Like, are we Isn't that with the, the mayor? With, with, when mayor. with the buyout with the governor's buyout? It was supposed to be left to natural, natural state status. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we cut along the cur uh, sidewalks so that it's not overgrown on the sidewalks, but the actual properties were supposed to be left at to the natural habitat. Mm -hmm. Natural mm -hmm. state. Yeah, this, some of the lots that are mowed, I believe, are being mowed by adjacent property owners. The borough is not mowing anything but which the goes, right of way around. Which them. goes back to what yeah. the Environmental Commission was looking to do mm -hmm. and that $50,000 that Steve was talking about earlier. Yeah. So you look incredulous, Fred, but um, unfortunately that's the way that the standard operating procedure for something like this is, right? You, you have to think of it as the houses that were built there um, destroyed the natural environment that operates like a sponge to deal mm -hmm. with storm surge, right? And so we are now trying to build that sponge back up. So the more vegetation, the more dirt that's there will now hopefully hold that water back from reaching across MacArthur. The problem is, um, and I dealt with this in my professional life in Staten Island where we're doing the same thing um, for most of the island. You get this high grass, you get bugs, you get rodents, I'm sure that people in the wintertime in that area will tell you there are mice and everything else running through the houses because it's warm. Um, it's not a great situation, but neither are hurricanes. And so um, it, it's just a bad situation, but from an environmental standpoint and from a, a storm prevention standpoint, unfortunately, this is the best way of going about it. But the more that we can do in terms of tree plantings, um, porous roadways, some of the other things that have come up through the Rutgers study, um, that's how we're going to have to approach You just got to look at it as the, sort of the new unfortunate normal, um, but this is the best you can do. Yeah, it's just a, it's a matter of appearances. So I guess, I guess for the average layman who's driving by and sees it, you know, uh, you're like, wow. Um, and I don't think they had too much confidence in, in you know, restoring the, the, the way it was supposed to be uh, if they also made everybody who stayed raise their houses. So uh, the thought here doesn't seem to kind of click, but uh, I guess I'll take it, you know, for what it's worth. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Block. Any other comments from the public? I have a question for Jay regarding the Minnesink Avenue one. I grew up Wait, right up the street. Can we close the public portion first? Oh, yeah, first? sorry. Um, uh, motion to close motion. the public portion. Second. Aye. Aye. Uh, the Minnesink Road, I grew up right up the hill from there, and I, I know there was a lot of trucks that used to get stuck underneath that bridge and the, the water bridge. ends up it's going and, and just settling down the bottom and it keeps on tearing up the road. Um, and I, I believe Cheese Creek on the other side is a little bit higher too, so that's naturally where it goes. Is that a candidate to look at something further for drainage or, or a possible op optional um, different type of road type in that section right there? The problem is that there's not much you can do with drainage because it is a low point in the roadway. You're, you're kind of because limited of to where the water can go to flow out. And you also have a problem with the railroad. A lot of the storm mm -hmm. water runs from the railroad down. It literally that area and, and actually digs brings up the road. dirt and that clogs your storm sewer. So it's, it's, it's become more of a maintenance issue where mm -hmm. the borough's got to go in there on a regular basis and just keep the storm drainage system clean and that'll allow the water to go through and flow. So from an engineering it's the runoff from that the bridge. I mean, it's always been it. bad ever since I, I was a kid. I actually see it coming down yep. off of the bridge, like it's, by where the cemetery is. It's like is a waterfall. Too. It literally is a waterfall that I've comes down. There. And then there are inlets in that path leading down to the road. Where most of the time, they're covered over with dirt and debris, so it just comes out into Menacee Avenue and causes that problem. So it's become a maintenance issue that the borough has to try to keep on top of. There's no other options for that. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Hang on. We won't be able to hear you from over there, but the public, yeah, the public portion's closed. closed. We'll yell that for but you. But the anyway. question, the question was, is yeah. would the railroad be in, um, responsible for that? But that everything that we have, including our stuff, our properties, lead to that. Mm -hmm. No, we it, we've we've requested Conrail many times go out, and what they do is That's they'll drop a load of stone to try to keep the the dirt and stuff from running off the roadway, and they, they've done that a couple of times when we've gone out there, but. That's about all they'll do is drop stone. Is there any other options other than paving? Because we just keep on investing money into that You're section. You're looking at major storm drainage improvements that you'd have to go through. You'd have to put additional storm drains in on the railroad side. When the road was originally reconstructed in the mid 80s, we actually put pipes underneath the concrete. So in the future, it could be extended through Bailey Park and out 
toward a discharge area, but you're looking at wetlands permits and a lot of other things that have to be obtained to allow that to happen. So the answer is, I guess, things could be done there, but it's going to be a very costly improvement. Because you just, it just keeps on happening. God. So, um, we, well, motion, motion to, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Aye. All in favor? Aye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a good evening. Ooh, Dan did it again. Good job, acting mayor. <laughs>